Thank you for coming today. My name is Margaret Vaughn. I'm the Executive Director of the Illinois Rural Health Association. And uh, we wanted to educate the, the public and the media about um, some of the impacts that fireworks have um, from the public health and uh, medical perspective. Um, we're very concerned about any attempt to expand the sale of fireworks in Illinois. We know that there was an attempt to do so at the State House um, this year. Um, that effort um, did not really go anywhere, and we really don't want to see them um, expanded at the state, state level or at the county, county level um, because we know it, it'll affect the rest of the state. Um, the uh, uh, there's a lot of different fronts that it, that it, that it affects, um, and we have different folks here today that are going to kind of give their own perspectives on that. Um, first of all, we're going to have Dr. Ryan Jennings. He's the chief medical officer for St. Anthony's Hospital. And, he can kind of talk from a medical perspective um, about what happens to uh, people, particularly children, um, when they suffer from burn injuries. No, thank you very much. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come and, and talk just a little bit today. And, and you actually kind of hit the, the high point of what I think is, is really critical to this, is that, I mean, we all know that, that people can be injured from fireworks and there are several thousand injuries every year. But the sad thing is that well over half those are in children. And you know, there's nothing that's more tragic than when a child has an injury to uh, a hand. I mean, the vast majority of these injuries are to the extremity. Uh, I mean, the two, the two bad, bad, bad things that happen are damage to your hand and damage to your eye. And children are the are the most vulnerable for that. And unfortunately, when you when these things become wild, widely available, they're the ones that are injured the most often. And I think that's what really has to come to the forefront. I, I above all, appreciate a good firework show. I put one. On every year, so most of you know, and, but it's done, uh, you know, as a as a public display, not uh, done with uh, uh, fireworks like this. Historically, I can't really comment on when someone repeals legislation or, or legalizes what happens uh, to the incidence of firework injuries. It makes sense you'd see more. I can tell you that historically when they put restrictions on fireworks, injuries went down. So, you know, uh, to me it makes sense to think that if you're going to then turn around and, and open something up that what once was not as accessible, uh, you're going to return to that baseline rate of injury and that's not what we, what we want for uh, our community and our children. So. Um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, like I said, the big two spots are the eye. I mean, everybody can absolutely imagine how, uh, you know, an injury to the eye can happen with bottle rockets or even just firecrackers and things like that. Um, and when you look at the most common causes of firework injuries, it's those types of, uh, of little small explosives, the things that, that kids want to play with, firecrackers, bottle rockets, sparklers. You know, it's not that they got their hands on something gigantic. They got their hands on the, the kind of small uh, fireworks that, that are what we're really talking about, making wild, widely available, and, and uh, you know, that's going to lead to injury. And it doesn't take uh, any imagination to know that if you tear up your hand as in childhood, uh, you know, you've got, a, you've got a permanent disability, which is absolutely a tragedy. So uh, I think, uh, you know, as, as folks go and, and start the conversation around this, uh, putting it in perspective, it's great to, to generate a revenue stream, and I, I can appreciate that as well. But uh, this is a this is a very dangerous way to do it, and unfortunately, uh, more likely the, the injuries will be in those that we care the most about, and that's our kids. So, appreciate the time. Thank you, Doctor. As the doctor indicated, uh, we're not anti-fireworks. We definitely are all for fireworks. We just think that they should be left in the hands of the trained professionals. We're talking about um, explosives here. And um, there's ample um, fireworks, plenty of professional fireworks shows. Uh, we're not saying people, you know, don't have to celebrate uh, Fourth of July without fireworks. Um, we're just saying that it should be left um, in the hands of the trained professionals. Um, the Illinois Rural Health Association, just to tell you a little about that, we've been around for 25 years. We're a collaborative organization of uh, medical schools, uh, rural hospitals, rural health clinics, um, uh, practitioners. Um, consumers, uh, elected public officials, and our main mission is to improve access uh, to health care in rural areas of the state. We know it's very difficult in rural areas to find uh, access to quality health care. In fact, if there was a very serious burn injury, they would have to most likely be airlifted to the, smoke, the closest burn unit would be either to Springfield or to St. Louis. So that's an issue for us as well, is, uh, is the access um, to quality health care, um, especially specialized care um, that, that, that would be created uh, through the burn injuries. As far as the cost, we know that the whole point of this is to generate revenue. However, um, burn injuries are one of the most expensive injuries to treat, and um, we figure that the 
if you do the math, the increased cost for the uh, response for the uh, first responders, which would be paid for by taxpayers' money, and the increased uh, medical claims, a lot of which would be Medicaid cases, uh, would also um, be eaten up by taxpayer money, not to mention the property damage. And a lot of the fireworks, they're not necessarily um, the people that are shooting them off that get injured. Um, there was a four-year-old girl in Missouri that was killed. She was sitting on a neighbor's porch, and uh, the bottle rocket tipped over sideways, and she was hit in the head, and was instantly uh, brain dead. So those are examples of cases where it's not necessarily the person that's shooting them off that gets injured, but the innocent bystander. Same thing with the property damage. Uh, it's not the person's house that's shooting them off, whose roof and, and fire gets damaged, but the neighbor's house. And, uh, that would just you know, lead to additional insurance claims and, and, and drive the cost up for everyone, especially since there is an alternative. There's ample professional shows that people can go to uh, to celebrate the 4th of July. As far as the states, what happens when they do um, legalize them? Well, we know that they're bringing them in, in anyway. We're not saying that you know if, if this doesn't pass, this is going to stop that. We know they're going to bring them in anyway. However, when they were legalized in states like Minnesota, the injury rate increased by 400%. So think of all those people that were injured, the majority of them children, whose injuries could have been prevented if that legislation was not in place. And a lot of these injuries, um, those people are going to live with for the rest of their life. Um, it, it, it's so easily preventable. I know, you know it's hard to prevent cancer and diabetes and a lot of other illnesses. Um, these are illnesses and, and injuries that are so easily prevented. And uh, like we said, the majority of them are to children, per capita, to children under the age of five. So. Again, we, we think it's, we understand, you want to bring in revenue, but we really don't think it should be done uh, on, on a, the, cost, the cost of human suffering, especially um, to children. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the uh, administrator of the Effingham uh, Health Department, and uh, she's also a advanced practice nurse and has worked in the rural health field for a long time, so she's very knowledgeable. Hi, I'm Rebecca Merton, the administrator here at the Effingham County Health Department. And my perspective on this is specifically public health. And the public health implications for me have to do with whether or not something, an injury or illness can be prevented, and then how do we weigh that against the benefits that might come from passing this type of an ordinance. The benefits to allowing consumers to buy and use fireworks are in the form of the pleasure it derives, the fun, those kind of things. And then of course for a government that would create a revenue stream. So those are some benefits. From my point of view and a public health perspective, the injury, the potential for injuries that would come from that does not, uh, is not offset by the benefits. And so there isn't there's no compelling reason to allow for the sale and use among consumers. The um, one thing I would want to say, my, I am thoroughly convinced that my colleagues at the county board are definitely concerned with the public health and safety of our citizens. And I'm not speaking against they're deliberating this ordinance. And I believe that they are working toward trying to enact an ordinance that would have some safety things built into it. But what happens is that even when people are being extremely careful with the use of fireworks, there are still unintended injuries. There are fireworks that don't detonate properly, and then when someone goes to check on it, it blows up in their hand. So even with the most careful precautions, I still believe that that cost in terms of human suffering and injury outweighs any benefits that we would have. And so I urge the county board to not pass an ordinance uh, legalizing consumer use of uh, fireworks in our county. Thanks. Next I have the incoming president of the um, Illinois Fire Chiefs Association, Brian Doyle, and in addition to just the injuries, he's going to point out with a couple of other facts about uh, the legalization of particularly these consumer fireworks and uh, concerns that um, not only the healthcare community has, uh, but that the federal, federal government and the Department of Justice has as well. Morning. Uh, one of the things uh, that's hot in the news right now, obviously, uh, we've got the trial going on of the uh, Boston uh, Marathon bombing. The, the products that were used in that bombing came from consumer fireworks. 
as did the uh, as did the Times Square bomber. He used common fireworks. Both of these were traced back to one consumer uh, place that they bought these fireworks. So these are common fireworks that they're using to make uh, explosive devices of mass destruction uh, that hurt and kill people. Um, as Margaret said earlier, this, uh, Minnesota, they legalized fireworks in Minnesota. They saw a 400% increase in their injuries due to uh, consumer-based uh, fireworks. Um, another thing, too, that we look at is, uh, according to the Consumer Product Safety uh, Commission, there's a 30% spike in fireworks injuries between the years 2012 and 2013. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the numbers yet between 13 and 14, uh, because uh, everything hasn't been tabulated from the fire departments and things like that. But we know that the injuries went up from 8,700 injuries due to fireworks that were reported uh, in 2012 to 11,400 in uh, 2013. 2013 we also had eight deaths due to consumer fireworks. So one of the last things I want to touch upon is the Consumer uh, Product Safety Commission and the Customs Border Protection. They're taking a look at the fireworks that are coming in and over 30 percent of the fireworks that are coming in uh, are non-compliant with, uh, with our federal regulations. They don't, uh, they don't meet the minimum safety standards. So again, these fireworks that are coming in, they're, uh, they're being used uh, by non-professionals. Uh, what they think may be a firecracker may not uh, be a firecracker. There may be a lot, lot larger explosions. Same thing with some of the other products that they're using out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the Department of Justice uh, has an explosive task force, and they've also issued a uh, warning bulletin to all the retailers of consumer fireworks. Um, as far as what uh, to look for in uh, suspicious buyers. Uh, and it's because of the fact that it sees specifically um, Class C consumer fireworks that are used um, uh, as improvised explosive devices. So um, it's just not, you know, a couple isolated cases. Um, the Justice Department is very concerned in these other type of fireworks dealers that would be brought into our state. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, we're not just talking about a couple single injuries. These fireworks, uh, these explosives, as you can see, the Boston Marathon, they have the potential to injure a great number of people, and it, and it doesn't take much. So um, we're very concerned with that, especially with all that's going on in the world right now. You know, there's, you never know when there's going to be a copycat cat incident, and we just don't want to make it easier for people to have access to these explosives um, and that they would be able to use them to harm others. And that's why the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police also stands um, in opposition to anything that would expand uh, the sale of fire wars. So next we have um, Chief uh, Dave Scurry. He, I'm sorry, Chief um, J Jim Creer. He's the president of the Illinois Fire Safety Alliance. He's going to tell you a little about what they do. Good morning. Is, uh, we talked about um, we're really not against fireworks, but um, we're trying to prevent the injuries that happen. As the Illinois Fire Safety Alliance, we are there for awareness, education, and burn prevention. One of the big things we do during the year, we have a camp for kids between the ages of 8 and 18 that have been burned severely where we have a camp for them. One of the things that, as we talked about, the doctor talked about is the long-term effects on kids. And some of the things we do is try to get them to cope with their injuries. After they're 18 years old, we have a young adult summit where we try to get them acclimated into society so they can work in society with the burns and things that happen to them. Um, the fireworks, even the city of Chicago, they have banned the sparklers because they start clothes on fire. Uh, they burn little kids' hands when they go to pick it up. They think it's out. They burn their hands. And as the doctor said, those are long-term injuries that will affect the rest of their life. Again, all the organizations here, we're here to prevent really what our jobs are. These are preventable injuries that we can stop. We try to prevent fires. We try to prevent injuries. We still have enough work to do, but these are one of the things that we want to prevent. We don't want more kids coming to camp. We have plenty of kids that are burned in other ways, but this is one of them that we can prevent a lot of those injuries. So I'm also second vice president of the Illinois Fire Chiefs. As you can see, we're all trying to work together to prevent injuries and keep everybody safe in Illinois. Thank you. And uh, finally, we have Dave Scurry. He is a burn survivor himself who um, 
has gone on to uh, found um, from uh, Tragedy to Triumph, which is a foundation to provide scholarships for uh, Illinois um, students that were uh, burn survivors. Uh, several of those students now have gone on uh, to study nursing, and there are actually nurses in uh, burn units. He has spent a number of years um, volunteering his time at this um, camp by me, the burn camp, as well as uh, in the burn units um, at the Loyola Hospital. So, um, Hi, uh, my name is Dave Sherry, and I'm proud to say I'm a burn survivor now 15 years. Over those 15 years, I've been volunteering at Camp IME, run by the Illinois Fire Safety Alliance, and also I uh, volunteer at Loyola Hospital, my wife and I, where we go in and talk to patients and their families to try to help these families deal with what happened to an adult or a child. And uh, I've met hundreds and hundreds of children over the years and I just want to tell you a little bit about maybe what a burn injury and what they go through and we'll start when that child or adult gets burned we'll start with the family their parents they have to wonder is their child gonna live or die are they gonna lose an eye a hand or a finger how are their lives going to be different how are our lives going to be different and for that child, that child's life is changing forever from that day. Whatever's happened to him, that child doesn't know what's going to happen to them. You know, in a burn unit, the nurses who are just God's angels who take care of these people who get burned. These children go into a tub room, and a tub room might sound fun to you, to other kids, but for a child that has to go in there, they have to debride them. They have to scrape off and get the dead skin off so the new skin underneath can grow. It's not easy. I can't imagine these nurses having to cause pain to these children to make them get better. But they do. And then after they go into that sometimes once a day, twice a day, for many days, many weeks, and sometimes these kids or adults, they have to go and get skin grafts. That means they have to take a donor site, they have to take some skin from an area that's not burned, put it on to the new, or to the area that was burned. Then this new donor site is very painful. The nerve endings are exposed, and anything they touch is so painful. A burn is the most excruciating pain anybody can go through. I know, I've been there but I did it as an adult. I can't imagine having a child go through this. And then after they get to go home, their life, they have to look at, what are their friends gonna think of them? What's it gonna be like to go back to school? What are my scars gonna be like? What will people do for me? You know, the best thing out there right now for these kids is the Camp I Am Me. This is where these kids learn to be around other children who are burned. And they learn coping skills. You know, my first year at camp as a counselor, I was burned in pressure garments to cover up my skin. This 10-year-old boy comes up to me and says, Mr. Shuri, you don't need to hide your burns here because we're all the same. This is what this camp is teaching these children, coping skills. They don't have what we have as adults. It takes many years to get that. So I'm asking the parents out there, the adults out there, it's our responsibility to watch over our children, to keep them safe from getting hurt. Let's not cause these children in Illinois, in anywhere in America, any extra pain and suffering that we could prevent. And I truly believe you could prevent children from being burned. So I, I, I thank you and I really hope your heart is in the right place for this and think about the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, another concern that we have, especially um, from the Rural Health Association perspective, is the impact that uh, fireworks have on post-traumatic stress disorder in uh, combat veterans, especially veterans from the um, Iraqi and uh, Afghanistan wars. Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder is uh, over 30% of the veterans in those wars suffer from it. Um, and unfortunately, a very common trigger um, 
is uh, fireworks. Not necessarily, it's not as problematic the big professional display shows that they know and they can anticipate you know, that that's going to happen next. It's unfortunately the consumer fireworks that are shot off erratically in neighborhoods. And uh, our poor veterans are basically prisoners of their own home. Um, they're, they're sitting at their kitchen table, and all of a sudden, you know, an M80 goes off, or a bottle rocket, and all of a sudden, um, they're flashed back. And um, the, the U.S. Veterans Administration says that both the, the smell and um, the sound of those fireworks um, is basically um, simulated combat in, those, in their minds, and it can set them back, um, and they can have debilitating uh, flashbacks. Um, and this can go on um, for days around the Fourth of July holiday. Some of them even have to leave town um, and go to state parks and that, um, just, just to get away from it. And um, again, we're not against people celebrating the Fourth of July, um, but the whole irony in it is I think we need to give the veterans a break. And if we do this for anyone, I think we have to we have to think of the veterans and that they fought enough for us, and we don't need them during the month of July. And if they're legal, it could be any time of year, having to relive um, those pain, painful battles and, and re-experience re, um, that, um, just so you know people can shoot off fireworks when there's ample public public professional displays um, that, we can, that they can uh, attend. So. Anyway, on behalf of the Illinois Fire Safety Alliance, we thank you all for coming today. Um, we respectfully ask the county board. We know that you're very well attended. Uh, we know that you know a lot of areas of the, of the state right now um, need additional revenue. Um, however, um, we would like you to please take into consideration um, uh, you know the increase of injuries, especially to children, uh, that this is going to create uh, potential deaths. Um, and uh, the, the veterans and the, the irre uh, irreversible damage that this could have on a, on a very um, high number of lives. And they, they unfortunately can, can easily be prevented. So again, we're not against fireworks. We're all for going for the professional shows, but we want them to stay illegal in, in all of Illinois.